Shalom, this is Avram Shira from Miron at the Tzion of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. It is Erev Shabbat and we're having one of our little talks. And it just occurs to me an amazing idea for Parshat Korach. The Zohar opens up talking about the praise of Torah, the praise of learning the Torah, especially the Torah of the Tzadik, Yisod Olam, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, the Holy Zohar. And he talks about the preciousness of the Torah and the work of the Torah is essentially calling on God's name because the Torah is all filled with God's name. So what are we doing when we're learning about God's names, especially in Kabbalah? There's so much activity around the names, the different names of God, the different traits they represent, the different power fields they create. What is it about names? What's in a name, you know? It's an old phrase from way back in London. But we talk about it, the name of God, we can translate name as reputation. We've said this before, we'll say it again. When we're dealing with God, we're dealing with our imagination of who He is. I want to repeat that. When I talk about God, when I think about God, what do I really know? How much do I really hold? How much does my mind grasp? So what I'm dealing with, as I'm talking to you right now about God, I'm talking about my projection of His reputation, what I think He is, what I imagine He is. But it's all an imagination. It's all a tiny piece of an infinite stained glass window. And everybody's mind is a little piece of that stained glass window. And so it's a projection of the mind. So my reputation, if I know you and I like you and I think you're a great guy or a great lady, so you have a reputation, but it's just it's in my mind. Somebody else might think the exact opposite of who you are or of who I am for that matter. So your reputation is only in our minds. It's not in the air and it's not in, in God's mind. He doesn't... <laughs> He doesn't project. He has the absolute truth of every single detail of every fact in creation. And every person he ever created is very clearly embellished and engra engraved in God's mind. He knows us. We know a slight tiny piece of ourselves and even less of our friends and family and even less of the infinite. So let's slow down and relax a minute here in the beautiful mountains of Meron. You see behind me, we're facing south, Kivan of Yerushalayim. People are coming, going all over the Tzion, enjoying the feeling of Erev Shabbat here in Meron for the Holy Day, Parshat Korach. When we talk about this idea of reputation, if you and I have a different idea of who God is, i.e., a different idea of his reputation, we're not on the same page. We're not on the same place of consciousness. But if we do, if we both agree that God is awesome and almighty and powerful and kind and merciful and patient and good and all those qualities, then our minds are sharing the same vision, the same projection. And so what happens? There's a unification between two people through our mutual vision of the same idea. Now what happens if a million people have the same vision of who God is? That's pretty hard to imagine, right? How about 10 people? <laughs> that would also be an achievement. So God knows how hard it is for us to think of infinite things, infinite qualities, eternal traits. He knows how limited our minds are. And he gave us tzaddikim. He gave us the truly righteous, awesome, pious people who dedicated their lives to coming close to the Divine Presence. And of course, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai is considered one of the greatest examples of that. So we come here to Meron, to Rashbi, especially on Shabbat, 
And all the people here have this similar idea. Now, they're all the same. But there's a similar idea that this guy is the Tzaddik. He is the real deal. He died 2,000 years ago, and his presence is still with us. And he's still sending us messages and still inspiring us. And still making the prayer flow from our lips like, like honey, you know. There, everybody has their own experience here, but when I get here, it's just like I want to pray. It just opens up. Even if I don't want to, I suddenly will want to. It's suddenly, the words just flow. Some people have that experience at the Kotel. Some people have that experience on Rosh Hashanah or Yom Kippur. Everybody's different. Because the parameters, the details of your composite soul are, are unique to you. But when we come to the Tzaddik on Shabbat, we've unified our minds about the idea of a Tzaddik in a place, Meron, in a time, Shabbat. We've just unified the world, space, time, Shabbat, the, the intentionality, the person, the personality, Rashbi, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. That is a complete unification. All three major realms of human reality come together in one time and place. And so, if you think about it, why do you get along and love certain people and not others? Because they have similar ideas to you. And when your mind and their mind come together on an idea, at that point they're one. Let's say you have a thousand points of ideas in your mind. If there's somebody else who has that same thousand points, they're going to be very close to that person. And that, that really is the goal of, of marriage marriage to your spouse and of course marriage to the divine presence that is as many of the points of desire of will of projection of unific of personality the projection of reputation that I think you're something I think you're a great person if 10 people think you're a great person then there's a flow of energy coming to you and if 10 people don't like you for whatever reason, let's say, then that the opposite occurs. There's a negative energy being taken from a person. So we got some youngsters in the background. They're having a good time looking at the birds flying here. You know, the Holy Zohar says if you go to a place and the birds are flying in a circle around the place, that's a sign of the presence of the Shekhinah. And you'll find that happening in Meron all the time, especially on Shabbat and especially on Lag Baomer. So enough said, here are the birds. Maybe you can see them in the background. <laughs> so these guys are having a good time. We're having a good time and it's great to have you there out there in Cyberland. And uh, we're here for uh, Shabbat. My daughter got married a few nights ago. We're doing Sheva Brachot. I bless you all to have these wondrous experiences of bringing your families together over holy and happy events. So we see in Parsha, Korach is all about the opposite of what we've been talking about. This week's Parsha, about this super wealthy Levi, he said, why does Moses and his family get all the attributes and all the honors and all the chairs of glory? What about my family? Now Korach was super rich, super rich, for his, maybe the richest man in Am Yisrael at the time, certainly a billionaire in, in comparative terms. And Korach, he made a split in the people. He said, well, you know, Moses is taking too much power to himself. What about me? What about my family? We're also Levim. God is also inside us. God is also speaking through us. And you know, he's right. All those things are true. <laughs> but one problem. His mind is not joining everybody else's mind on who the tzaddik of the generation is. He thinks Moses is just another guy. He thinks Moses is just one of millions of prophets. And that's his mistake. There are millions of tzaddikim, righteous people. There's only one tzaddikador. There's only one yesod olam, the foundation, the point in the pyramid where the infinite light passes through human consciousness and spreads into the rest of humanity. It's a filter. And all minds are filters of ideas, 
that are flowing from top to bottom, from the most revealed to the least, from the highest to the lowest, from the purest to the least pure. And so when we understand the structure of souls, then a lot of the Torah starts to make more sense. And we can even understand a guy like Korach, who, who, who just hungry for power. He's, but his idea is kavod. It's, it's, he wants the attention. He wants to be known as something other than the rich guy. Now, there are a lot of rich people like that. They have money, but they're not happy. Why aren't they happy? Well, there's a lot of reasons not to be happy. But one of them is, is because when you have a lot of money, like Korach did, you want more and more attention and more notoriety, fame. You like the thought that other people are thinking about you. Now, for me, that's, I don't know, that's a little, that's a little queasy, that feeling of other people thinking about me. That's not a, some, a goal. That's not a purpose in life that other people think of you, that's absurd. That's Hollywood. That's klipa. That's the external forces of negativity. Because they're, they're not there to help you. They're there to, to make people think things that we don't want them to think. But anyways, Korach, of course, what happened with him and his people, well, what happens to all people who go against the truly righteous leader of the generation. And every leader has to deal with his Korach. Every leader has his opposition. Rabbi Nachman says, if the tzaddik doesn't have opposition, he's not the real deal. So Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai is the paragon of the tzaddikim. 13 years in a cave, author of the Zohar, performer of many miracles, and you know, all you have to do is read one page of the Zohar and you can understand this book is something else. This book gives the heart something it didn't know it needed. People can go their whole lives without learning Zohar, but when you open the book and you sense the love there and the closeness of the relationship to the Divine Presence, then we realize what we didn't have, that we didn't even know we were missing. And that's the beauty coming to Meron, spending a little time here, whether it's an hour, or a day, or a Shabbat, or a week, whatever God blesses you with, it's the second most popular tourist spot in Israel, behind the Kotel. So that should tell you something, that people know there's something here. And uh, we're blessed to be able to come here for Shabbat, and to visit, and to, sometimes we camp, sometimes we just pass through, but you know, you can achieve a lot in a very short time when your heart is with what you're doing. So I want to bless everyone with a holy Shabbat, a Shabbat of peace, a Shabbat of looking around you at everybody's way, everybody's projection of the reputation of God. Because some people hold God way up high. Some people hold God not as high. Everybody has their own place in the ladder of priorities. Some people hold, people like Korach are the most important because they're the wealthy people. And some people hold like, you know, the superstars of entertainment are the important people. But we know, we know who the really important people are. They're the ones who are giving life force to all creation through their Torah, through their prayer, and through their good deeds. You see the birds still circling around us. <laughs> it's beautiful. And so we should only merit to, to learn Torah together again and again until the end of time. Why not? So be blessed, be happy, pay attention to what is reputation because it's a force field of personality. It's not just an idea. It is the personality that you project into the world and what we project into the world, eventually that comes back to us. We want to be careful about that. We want to project the beautiful ideas into the world, and then that's what's going to come back. So God bless all of you. We'll see you again next week on all the outlets. Shabbat Shalom.